I want to welcome you to the Berkeley uh, Fellowship of Unitarian Universalists. This is a social justice committee event. We have some flyers over here for the month of October uh, where you can see uh, we've always got things happening here because we partner with good people like you guys. Of course, tonight we're going to hear about preserving the wild buffalo. In the room tonight we have Gene Herman right there. Wave to him, Gene. He's going to celebrate his 82nd birthday here on October 14th. We've got some flyers of that, too. And um, his um, darling is uh, Dolores Hellman. She's going to be the featured artist. She's, we've got a new video of her up on, on uh, Facebook and YouTube where she's doing tap rap from the Better World Festival. So check that out. Yes, Transition Berkeley is one of our favorite partners in, in uh, the area. They always have good food here from natural gardens, organic. They don't use plastic. And they do really good educationals with an emphasis on how to, how to have community locally. So that's going to be October 6th. It's 6 to 7 p.m. for the potluck, 7 to 9 p.m. for the program. And it says this week they're going to have, uh, this time they're going to have Citizens Climate members lobby, Citizens Climate lobby, Amy Gorman and Harry Chomsky, for presentation and discussion on CCLs, legislative proposals for a comprehensive and effective solution to the climate crisis. So come here if you're interested in that one. Thursday, October 13th, the Conscientious Projector Film and Speaker Series for the 99%. We're going to present Nuclear Heartland. It's an updated guide to where these missiles are in the United States, these missiles that we're aiming at the rest of the world. The U.S. has is, is, um, increased its nuclear arms race way more than you know. John Pilger wrote an article about uh, the uh, Obama and uh, Clinton administrations, what they've been doing kind of secretly. The press is not reporting it. A whole new arms race has started, and they even think that many nukes are usable. They've moved all the way to the border of Russia, too, as you well know. And they, want, they have no real reason or legal reason, I should say, to violate Syrian sovereignty. They're in there fighting a proxy battle with proxy ISIS. And you can look into the funding of that. You're going to find out some strange funding uh, uh, sources for that. Anyway, that's, that's going to be pretty interesting. And we're going to have uh, John M. LaForge and Arian S. Peterson here. The heartland of the U.S. should be used to grow needed crops, not harbor weapons in mass destruction. As political elites pursue a new Cold War and the menace of nuclear weapons continues to build, Nuclear Heartland, the revised edition, reliably extends our horizons for renewed nonviolent resistance. So that's a very important program. And it really is something that you can verify is happening and it's hair trigger dangerous. We just can't have it. I told you about October 14th. It's going to be uh, the uh, open mic with our legendary poet, Gene Herman, and his wife, Dolores Hellman, as a featured artist. And then Thursday, October 20th, we have a 7 p.m. documentary film screening. And I've seen this. This is an excellent, a wonderful film called Paying the Price for Peace. It's about a man who's been on this very stage, Brian Wilson, who lost his legs on the railroad tracks trying to stop the uh, arms trains, as you recall. So uh, help us spread the word and keep these things happening here. That's all I have to tell you about for now. I want to bring Karen Pickett up here and get our uh, Night of the Buffalo started. And she'll introduce the other people. Thank you very much for coming. So I just want to welcome everybody again. And um, I'm really glad that we could bring the Buffalo Field Campaign to the fellowship here. The, um, thanks to the Social Justice Committee of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Berkeley. Um, this is, I believe, this is our first time at this hall um, collaborating with. We've we've brought the uh, Buffalo Field Campaign to several different venues in. The East Bay and San Francisco, when they do their their yearly tour, roadshow tour, and I think this is the first time that, that they've come here. So um, it's great that that 
It's a great collaboration, and we'll probably come back here again sometime. And I'm really looking forward to tonight. I really look forward to when the Buffalo Field Campaign comes to town. They're, they're old friends, good friends, but they are also, it's, it's one of my favorite campaigns. It's really an amazing campaign because they're just, they're, they're tenacious. They persevere. And the, the approach is, is um, one, of the, one of the things that I really like about the, the way that they work. You know, they're, they're not an environmental group that says, okay, we're going to go, we're going to be the saviors. We're going to come galloping in on the, on the white horse and save the buffalo. What they do is they stand with the buffalo. They live with the buffalo. They're there. They're there defending the buffalo against others of their species, our species, who would come in and kill them and haze them. But they, they bear witness and they stand with the buffalo in, in a very dedicated and courageous way. So it's, it's great that they travel around every year and, and tell the stories because they're, they're magical stories, they're powerful stories. And before we start, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, the, the Buffalo Field Campaign has some silent auction items. They have this whole table over here of merchandise, and down the end I have a little bit of Earth First merchandise as well. But um, kind of between the Earth First stuff and the, and the Buffalo gear, there are several silent auction items that you can bid on, and then at the end of the night, um, whoever has the highest bid will take those beautiful items home. They're from Patagonia. They're really cool, so check them out when you have a minute. And with that, I'm going to bring up our first musician, and um, we'll have some more music after that, and then we'll have Mike Meese and telling stories and showing videos. So our first musician is Karaj. Welcome. Thanks so much. It is an honor to be here. I'm sort of new to the Buffalo Field Campaign. I had uh, just uh, been working on an album, and there was a song about Buffalo that I recorded, and I sent it into the campaign just uh, saying maybe somebody would appreciate it. And they said, sure enough, uh, they're coming out west and uh, come play that song. So I'd love to play this song. It was actually inspired by the buffalo out in Golden Gate Park. And it's always been a curiosity that there are buffalo in Golden Gate Park. So this song asks the musical question, why are there buffalo in Golden Gate Park? And aren't we all kind of like buffalo confined in Golden Gate Park? This one's called Headlands. sides of this city down from the hillsides through the tall grass we called home turning softly like moss on a stone as we chased the blue horizon season summer saw behind us from the tropics to the poles and like a wildfire out of control overgrazing started taking its toll Broken arrows shoot chemical contrails to the unknown. Like an eagle, we used to fly from the great plains to the ocean, migrating with the planet's motion beneath the stars before the snow. Try 
began to unfold a map on places we used to go. Tearing all the pages back for things we used to know. Now we're calling out our senses, tearing down the cyclone fences. Following the river back to where it used to flow. Climb out the subway station, try to gain some elevation. Head out to the headlands, to where the wild things grow. Psychedelic flashes back in dreams of wild abandon at the corner of Hayden Stanyan, west through the avenues. Tie dye colors fade to black as evening fills the canyon, running upstream with the salmon beneath the new moon. Native drifters, a place of our own. On an island reservation, like a sand dune crossed the sunset, we were blown. Packed together to weather the storm, while the distant sounds of thunder shake the metropolitan tundra near the vacant industrial zone. Trying to unfold a map on places we used to go. Tearing all the pages back for things we used to know. Now we're calling out our senses, tearing down the cyclone fences. Following the river back to where it used to flow. Climb out the subway station, try to gain some elevation. Head out to the headlands. See what's going down below Weekends in Mendocino Nickel slots at the casino Head off to the headlands To where the wild things grow Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be part of this. Pleasure to uh, be in support of such fine work, and I'm looking forward to learning more. I'd like to introduce Mignon, who's going to come up and uh, tell us a lot more and play some beautiful music for us. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for joining us here. Another road show with the Buffalo Field Campaign. Thank you for supporting the last of the wild buffalo out at Yellowstone. My name is Mignon Helly, and I've been on this road show. This will be my fourth time. Been involved with the Buffalo Field Campaign for about six years now. And uh, I first got involved because I actually met Mike Meese and Goodchild Aguilar when they were doing a road show similar to this in Sacramento in 2009. So I'm going to start out with the song that I usually do at Good Shield, and it's called Stampede, and a little history about it. It was, uh, I kind of composed it, and uh, I didn't have a name for it, and then one day we had a video behind us, and it had buffalo stampeding, so we both decided to name this Stampede. <laughs>
thank you. I did a little bit of a Buffalo Wild after Stampede. I don't know if any of you recognized it. By the way, these beats on this loop station are Goodchild's beats. So he's still with us in spirit, even though he wasn't able to make it this year. Oh, this song is uh, called The Headman's Theme, and it's from another album. Goodchild and I worked with a Nisinan uh, rock band, and the Nisinan people are the people from the El Dorado County area near Coloma, where the gold rush actually took place. And the Nisenan people lived on the South Fork of the American River and that whole area around there, Auburn. And uh, um, this is where the gold rush took place. And the headman's theme is about the headman uh, gathering the people, the Nis his Nisenan people, and trying to uh, persuade them to get together and to flee the area because, you know, the miners were coming. And, of course, you know what happened there. So this is headman's theme. And the original song is... It's got, it has words, or the song is written in the Nisinan language, so there are lyrics to it. But I'm just going to play the flute version of it. <laughs>
Thank you. We hope to come out with an album. It will be a 13-song album. The Nisinan name for that album will be uh, Honi Soni, which in the Nisinan language means something is broken inside. In fact, there is a play out there right now. It might come to this area. Check it out. Something is broken inside. And um, the name of our band is Walan Amana, rock opera band. Walan Amana means uh, the ancient past looking to the future. So look for that. Coming to your area someday soon. So I'm going to switch it up a little, little, give you a little variety. This song, this song is Red Tail, and it's something I composed for someone who wanted a flute introduction to their song called Red Tail. It was a band, and uh, so I gave them a few samples of music, and they chose one of them. And so then I went on to take that same introduction and expand on it. And... Uh, Red Tail. In fact, it's on one of our CDs over there, Solamente. It's the first song on our Solamente CD. Thank you. Red tail. 
going to play this next song without any drum beats. Unless someone can play congas at a 6-8 beat. Anybody? Um, this is a song that I learned when I was a, probably a young teenager. My brothers were musicians. One played congas, piano, timbales, uh, saxophone, and the, the classical flute. And my other brother played uh, um, guitar, lead guitar, and, and uh, bass guitar, and clarinet, I think. And then I have a sister who was a vocalist, and she's still in a band right now. But anyway, uh, so when I was a kid, I picked up on some of the music, and I was never a musician back then, but I, we had a piano, an old upright piano, and there were certain songs that I liked, and I liked this one called Afro Blues, which is a very jazzy uh, percussion kind of piece with a lot of uh, popular um, musicians. Mongo Santamaria was a percussionist, and I think John Coltrane is included. So there was saxophone, piano, flute, all kinds of music on this uh, particular uh, song called Afro Blues. So I've switched it around, and I kind of remembered it because I used to play it on piano, at least try to play it on piano. And this is my version, and I called it Native Blues. With my, it's my own version, so. I did get licensed to use it, too. <laughs> um, and it is on our album, on both albums. So this is just a flute version. Uh, Goodchild has guitar and drums and everything else on it.
Thank you. Here's another song that I learned when I was in elementary school, when we used to have music programs and teachers knew how to sing, and they teach us songs. Besides those old country westerns, like I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande, uh, we did learn one that I thought was kind of nice. It was Zulu Warrior. Do any of you remember Zulu Warrior? Yeah, see, he does. Okay, but this is my version. This is a flute version. Okay, this one is kind of a techno thing that Goodchild came up with, so these are his beats. And again, I'm just going to play the flute version. And this is called Seven, and it's actually on our Fifth World CD, and it's background music for uh, one of the Buffalo Field Campaign presentations by Mike Meese.
never know when it's going to end. So I'm going to slow it down with a song called Eagle, Come Pray For Me. And it was actually originally by a Mohawk named Lawrence Laughing, who comes out from Aquasasne. I think he's, he's won a NAMI award. This is one of the songs that was on his album. And I think he won a NAMI is a Native American Music Award. I think he won it like 20 years ago. Anyway, so I've taken the song. I mean, he knows that I take his songs and I made it a flute version. And actually, it's on our album. It's called Shank Manitou, Manitou, Shank Manitou. And Goodchild does some spoken word with it about the uh, iron horse which is the automobile. And it's on our, I think it's on a Solamente album. This is one of the first songs I composed when I first started playing the flute. And uh, it's called Sierra War Cry, and it was inspired by what happened uh, again in El Dorado County, um, the gold rush, and yeah, so it's called Sierra War Cry. It's also on our Solamente album. No, it's on our Fifth World album. Um, you'll hear the voice of uh, Martin Luther King. And so it was really enhanced, but this is just the original flute version. That's 
not it. Okay, I think that's the last of the songs, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> if you like some of the music, don't forget we have a few CDs uh, for sale over there at the BFC table where James is working hard. I see him? He's working really hard. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for uh, listening and tuning in, and I'd like to introduce Karen Pickett again. So, Karen. Yeah, just um, just a quick couple of things. And I wanted to say that, you know, I usually Good Shield tour, tours with the Buffalo Field Campaign, and, and as much as I love Good Shield's music, and I do, um, it's really a treat to have Mignon playing solo, and um, you just shine, Mignon. So, thank you. It's really wonderful. Um, so, I just wanted to let people know that I am going to pass the hat, pass the can, <laughs> the, the donation can around, and this goes to the Buffalo Field Campaign. And, you know, they're... they're uh, Bare Bones organization, they run on volunteers, they run on donations, and they do a lot because they're out there 365 days a year with the buffalo, watching out, guarding the, the, uh, against the Montana Department of Livestock um, and their nefarious policies. And they're, they're just, they're there all the time. And, and a lot of what they do on these tours is recruit volunteers because that is what they run on uh, back in West Yellowstone is people come from all over the world and they house and feed them and people have an amazing experience, but they are put to work defending the buffalo. So um, Dig deep if you can, and uh, send them on their way with with full pockets. And don't forget the the silent auction items um, back on the table. There, they're really cool, um, and they're things that you know you're not going to see at the at the corner store. Um, they're really beautiful Patagonia 
products. And we'll have a little bit of time at the end so that people can really put James to work on the merchandise table there. So make sure that you peruse all that. And as I pass the can around, I have the great pleasure of bringing up my very good buddy, Mike Meese.